Welcome to the Toxin Magazine's Everything Old School Podcast. I am your host, Marquise Marrow, and today we have a very interesting and common conversation going on. We are going to talk about why black men date white women. Mm. So that's deep. Now, I wanna I wanted to come to this um situation because I don't want to be stereotypical and I know everything doesn't apply to everyone, but I wanted, I was motivated to do this interview because lately, especially lately, I've seen a lot of black women who just got an attitude and I say for no reason, there's a reason for everything, but I say for no reason. And I guess because it, it seems like it's no reason to me because I ain't did nothing to you. I don't even know you. So what you got an attitude about? And I've seen it with um with women and uh, and why they even with their man. So, but what we're gonna do is um and I can, and I said that to say this. I couldn't understand why a black man would go to another race. I can understand that because sometimes them attitudes is hard to deal with. So I can understand that. I've never been outside my race, but like I said, I can understand why I will, why uh, a person would. So we we going to start with my man Elliot. He represent Norway from Texas. Now you were married to a white woman, am I correct, sir? Yep, I was. And now you're married to a black woman, and you call her big sex. Is That's that correct? Right. That's right, my big sex. <laughs> so. I want you to tell me what was your experience with the white woman? First of all, how how did that happen? How did that occur? Well, I, I really didn't have a bad experience with her. Um, we got married while I was in the military. So there, there was no real, there, there was no problem. Um, I think if I don't know the things then that I know now, I would not have done that. But why? you you pose the question, you say, well, why are you mad at me? And oftentimes we're looking at social media and a lot of other things, things on TV shows, whatnot, about we, we see black women bashing black men. So your question is why? What is your attitude for? Well, you can sum that up into something very simple. It's not that hard. We we get what we get from black women called black women down through, let's say, the past three to four decades. Our women tend to look at us through white man's eyes. Okay. And so they, not all, but many, have adopted this attitude that men aren't nothing. That, that's a misconception. Black men have a lot of trials, okay? And there's a lot of things put out here, especially in the black community, for black men to have to deal with on a personal level, and we have no outlets. We don't have Good black women we can go home to. You see what I'm saying? And we, we've gotten into this thing where uh, black men, we're not as masculine as black men used to be, if you will, because everybody want to see your softer side, this, that, and other. To me, that's a bunch of garbage. Black men have feelings just like black women how we tend to deal with them is a bit different. So uh, let me ask you this. Let me let me ask you this uh, while it's fresh in my mind. So you said if you knew what you know, if you knew then when you were dating a white woman, which you know now, you wouldn't have did it. I what what do you mean it. by that? Because, because now I understand that everybody want to be like a black woman. We got queens. We have queens. They just been taught 
these these bad things about us. And a lot of that is our fault because we get out here and we do a whole lot of stuff we ought not be doing. We're not paying attention to the things we should be paying attention to. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And we don't give black women, good black women, they don't get the credit that they should get for being strong individuals holding the household together. You see what I'm saying? We don't recognize them is, is what I'm saying. And so that tends to breed a lot of anger with, with them. You see what I'm saying? But there are some good black women out here and we need to be searching for them. So what's the difference? What's the difference in your experience? What's the difference between being married to a white woman and a black woman? Is there cultural differences? Is there attitude difference? Is it a mentality difference? What, what, what's the main difference if you can point it out? Well, I guess it depends on which woman, which woman you get, whether they white, black, Hispanic, Asian, it doesn't really no, matter. In your experience, in your personal experience. Well, in my personal experience with, well, I've, I've dated white women and it just, I don't feel that connection. You know what I'm saying? They there, but they like a piece of furniture. You know what I'm saying? There's no, I, I'm speaking for me. Yes. I didn't really have an emotional connection with the white women that I've dated in the past. You see what I'm saying? But I think that white women opposed to black women, their motivations for being with a black man is different. You see what I'm saying? Because okay. let's, let's, let's use like professional athletes, for example. They were a black woman through high school, through college. Soon as they get that big contract, what they do, they go get themselves a white woman. You see what I'm saying? That white woman motivations and it's different from a black woman. You see what I'm saying? Because black women, as well as white women, see potential in the man. The black woman, the potential she's looking at is try to make you a strong king. And she can help you with that. Because if she's strong, she's going to keep you on the straight and narrow. It's going to be some tough days. However, with a white woman, her she see your potential earnings. You see what I'm saying? And, and that's it. That's mm. it. If you're a pro athlete, <laughs> you making millions and, and, and you're a good football player, basketball player, what have you, she see your potential earnings, not who you can be potentially as a man. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? Yes. So the, the thing is, when you look at just that fact, a good black woman, they care about your earnings, but it's not her key reason for being with you. You see what I'm saying? Especially she have the potential of earning her own money, have her I own house, pay her own bills. She doing all of this stuff before you even came into the picture. You see what I'm saying? Yes. But she want a strong king. And with good black women, they have a thing called security. All women want security, but black women need a certain type of security first. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Are you gonna are you gonna protect me if something pop off? We're, are you going to get up and go to work and, and be the good dude that I need you to be for me, for our potential children in the future? But there's a certain amount of character you have to have in a, in a relationship with a good black woman. And these things, they're steps. They're steps. You, so you, let, you know. me, let, me, let me go to the lady now. Uh, we speaking with, with Racine. How are you, ma'am? I'm well. Last time I heard you was Connecticut's finest. So I mean, I, I, I have a question for you. So how do you feel about what he said 
um, as far as the, the black woman, uh, a black man be with a white woman. What, what, what's your take on that? And let you know what? Let's let's pause on that. Why would you say that black? What do you agree that first of all that a lot of black women have attitudes? Would you agree with that? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you yes. so you tell your story then. A lot. No. For me personally, um, and I can only speak for myself, I definitely don't have a negative attitude towards Black men. I hold Black men in very high regard, regardless of some of the trials that Black men have brought me through, because I was primarily raised and nurtured by a Black man. And I mean, my father had seven brothers, so I grew up in a family full of strong black family oriented men. So my perspective on black men may be different from most. But it's my norm. Well, we had a negative the negative images that I have of black men are from black men that I've dated, not from black, not from any quote unquote daddy issues, which a lot of, a lot of black people, period, men and women have, not Mm -hmm. just black men, women. And I know that because I'm a black woman who has dated black men with daddy issues. Well, my question is this, because we had a conversation and, um, Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to miss I don't want to um I'm not going to say misquote you but you did it if I'm not mistaken well I brought up this I brought up the scenario I brought up the situation of why black women have attitudes and you made a good point and I didn't think of that and you said something to the effect well you know it's because of what the what the black woman goes through you know um she got a she's Absolutely. with a man and the man makes the baby and leaves so, for instance, so, you know, there's a lot of reasons why a woman could have an attitude and, and we as men don't even know. So could you could you. Well, really- first of all, I mean, this is not, this is this is well known. Black women are the most disrespected group, period. We are like at the bottom of the totem pole. We get the we get the least respect. However, we are the most educated group of people. Right, black women, black women, and right now today, and you can look it up. Black women, single black women, are the highest um, group of highest grown group of being homeowners. Like black women have had to do so many things for themselves by themselves because we are again disrespected and neglected by our black brothers. It's very sad to see. But it is what it is. Not all, but. So do you feel that? That's a fact. Do do you feel that because of that, that that's why a lot of black women have attitudes because they have to be the man. Have anger issues. Absolutely. Because we champion, we as a whole champion and support black men all the time at all costs. And we don't get the same treatment in return. Look at your your boy, uh, Coon Terry Cruz, and the whole situation that happened with him and uh, Gabrielle Union with the America's Got Talent situation. I don't know how familiar you are with this situation, but you can look it up. Not at all. She, well, that's what I'm saying. So she had an issue that she brought to the forefront about America's Got Talent and how they were um, mistreating her. Right. A black woman. And then Terry Crews, a black man, instead of even if he even if he didn't speak out in support of what she was saying, at the very least, he could have just kept his mouth closed. But no, he did not. That black man chose to speak out against her and denounce what she was saying to be true for her feelings in a situation. To this white infrastructure. 
I'm just saying black men don't support us as a whole. So you got to look at the part that the black men are playing in how and why black women are angry. It's a it's a layered situation. Makes sense. We we don't just get angry. No black women are, are not just angry for no reason. Black women have been the black the backbone of black families, as the other gentleman said, for ye centuries. Black women have been holding the family together and holding that. It's always been like Big Mama's house. It's uh, it's always Big Mama, Big Mama. Like it's always been the, back, back to slavery time. That black woman was getting raped in the field, getting beat by the master, getting all of that. But she still would be there to support her man at home, regardless, and, and still raising the kids, raising master kids, all of that. I mean, this is the generations of behavior and treatment and black women always showing up and supporting her black man. And wanting him to to feel supported because we know as black women that our men have to go out in this world and they and they are being disrespected and they are having a hard time. And we are very aware of that. Us in the home. So we're always putting our feelings to the side to be there for our black men. And when the chance comes around for the black man to do the same for us, it doesn't happen. More, more often than not, you're saying. More so, often than not. Just like what this gentleman just said about, about a basketball player. A black woman will be with him through high school, through college. She's supporting him. She's supporting him. She's supporting him. And then when he gets on, he leave her ass for a white girl. Like it, and you, you, can't, you can't be confused about where the anger is coming from. When we are always putting ourselves in a position to support and be there for our brothers, and we do not get the same in return. So, so let me ask: yeah, Black women can be very angry, of course. So, Elliot, let me ask you this: um, in, in your opinion, do you think that, and, and what she said was very true, and it applies, but do you think that um, also is cultural? Like when you were married to the white women, did they show or the white the white woman? Did she have an attitude a lot? Was it smooth sailing or did she tell you to kiss my, you know, did she, did she go there? No, I never went through none of that. But now let me see, say now, this. Now, see, now, 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 hold that I never up. went through that. But I never the reason went why, through that. The reason why I brought that up is because I'm, I'm asking, do you think that maybe it's cultural how a black woman would act and a white woman wouldn't or even another race? Because there are some races that, for lack of a better term, worship their man, and they would never disrespect him. They would never have an attitude and say and curse them at them or curse them out. So you think I'm but asking that, you? But that's the thing. Black women generally are the ones that do that to their men. Asian women don't do that to their men. Most white women don't do that to their men. Mexican women don't do that to their men. You know what I'm saying? But I agree so you think with her. It could be cultural? You think it could be a cultural thing? Well, a, a, a lot of it is this. For a long time, black fathers have been taken out of the home. Mothers can't teach black boys how to be men. You see what I'm saying? So yes. a lot of time, you got young black men with a lot of potential, but they haven't been taught how to be men. And a lot of our sisters, they go out there and they get with this guy and they think, oh yeah, I got me a man. No, you don't, you got a little boy. He still got- 100%. He, 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 he still got baby milk around his mouth because he hasn't been taught how to be a man. Now, let me say this. You can't love every woman the same way. How you love Lisa and you leave Lisa, Ain't the same way how you love Barbara because their need for love is different. You see what I'm saying? How you in a, see how you interact with different people because different people have different personalities. What's good for Lisa ain't good for Barbara. You see what I'm saying? So understandably, 
sisters are tired of carrying these little boys. But these little boys are going to be little boys because they ain't got no man in the house to teach them nothing. You see what I'm saying? Which is exactly and, why I said men and women have daddy issues. I, I wasn't raised up by my mom and my daddy. My grandparents raised me. So the things I learned about being a man, I learned on my own in these streets. And my wife, she right here, she'll tell you, I raised my kids in my house, even though I wasn't raised in my father's house. It wasn't an option for me, for my kids to be calling another cat daddy. You see what I'm saying? You wasn't there when I was making them. And I refused to have my kids be raised up in another man's house. That's my responsibility. On top of that, I taught my daughters as well as my sons how to be good adults. Now, once you become an adult and move out of my house, what you do is your business. But what I don't do, I don't justify your BS. And I don't make excuses for you, nor do I pay for your bad choices. I don't do that because... Before you left my house, you was equipped with the tools to be able to take care of yourself and do right by the people that you with. There's, there's no excuses for a cat that was raised up in the house with his father and he had a good father. It, it's, it's no excuse for you to be a bad father because you know how to be a good father by example of your own. You see so what I'm saying? So let, so let me ask you this, sir. Um, you... Well, yo, when you had a wife, the white wife, was she the first white woman you were with? Did you have white girlfriends? First one. And last? First one. And I had a couple of white girlfriends since then. But okay. again, I didn't have no emotional connection to this females. You see what I'm saying? It was just Something was missing. Something was missing. No. A hundred percent. Don't don't misunderstand what I'm saying because I done been with some black women too that I didn't have no kind of emotional connection. And, and I guess because if I, I'm looking at where, I'm, where I am today and if you ain't bringing nothing to the table for us to build a foundation on, why are we wasting our time? Because you got to bring more to the table than just your body. Because a body with no brains ain't a damn thing. It is that, it's just that simple. And I'm just putting it out there because that's life. You could be the finest woman in the world. You can have the best sex in the world. But if you ain't got nothing in between your ears where we can sit down and have good conversation about, if we can't talk about a five-year plan, what we're going to do and what we're going to do mm -hmm. and how we get there, what, what are we together for? I agree. I no potential. And see, here's another thing. A lot of sisters, just like a lot of the mother woman, they always looking for a man to bring this, 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 to the table, you want me to bring something to the table? Hell, you ain't even doing for yourself. So everybody got to be able to bring something to the table. If I got two cents, at least bring two cents so we can make four cents or have the potential to bring two cents to match my two cents. See what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about when I say, when I say have a brain. You know let yeah, yeah, I, 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 it makes sense. You broke it down. Now I have a question for you, Racine. Um, because we we've had some conversations, and y you said some things like, uh, um, most men or most black men they show their representative. Am, am I misquoting you? No. The okay, I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page, and I wasn't, you know, hearing things. So. If a white man, after all of, all of the years that you have been, for lack of a better term, well, I won't say mistreated, but you weren't treated as the queen that you know you are by black men. Or mm -hmm. after all these years, and if a white man approached you and he was everything 
that you wanted in a man, would you date him? No. Why? Just, I'm not just interested in dating a white man. But I mean, no but I'm. No disrespect to people who date outside their race. That's just not something I'm even interested in. I am well, very much attracted to black men okay, and so let want me to this. be with the black men for almost the kind of the reason, part of the reason of like he was saying, like it, there is there is unspokenness between black men and women. You understand cultural things. There are things that we could be standing in a space together in a, a store. I don't know, whatever. And something happened and I could be in a store with a stranger that's a black person. And we would look at each other immediately and we would have an understanding of a situation without words. That's a cultural thing. It's and it's it's just something that's in us. And you're going to understand. It's just like using the slang saying um, you straight, you straight, you straight. Like we're going to understand things. We have a language between us. That is unspoken. And yeah. I need that. I require that. I need that. And I'm, I would not settle for less. And even with all what you're saying, what this white man would bring, he can't give me that. That which I require. And, and so so at that point, and like you it's said, a culture, spiritual so, thing. Yeah, it, yeah. It and definitely I gonna, is. I, I was going to say that at that point, it has nothing to do with race. I was going to say it's cultural. Yeah. But you, you said spiritual, which which is basically the same thing, but a different. It all different ties word. in. It all ties in, and, and I, I require that. So it doesn't it doesn't matter what that. If he got you know thousands of dollars in the bank or whatever, like, of course he would make he would do whatever to make me happy. I'm sure, but would I really be satisfied? Would my soul be satisfied? This you don't is a life partner. Money. If I'm marrying you. No, I'm. I'm. That's no, no. And, and see, that, that, that's that's why you. That's why you. That's why you get into the idea because see, money can buy accessories, okay. Right. But on a spiritual level, there's a certain necessity that you need. That's why I said it's that which different. I require. Accessories and necessities are different. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, what, what what do we need to do as a people to fix our cultural dysfunction? First, I think we need to start listening a little bit more. Because one thing that I found about a woman, because I've been with this one here 20 years next month. They, this month, actually. Yes. Yeah. Women tell you exactly, especially black women, they tell you what they need from you. All you mm -hmm. got to do is listen. And you can't just listen with these two ears. There's a third ear you have to listen to. And I know I, I'm, I'll be 58. Okay, so it takes some time to get there. Black women tell you what they need from you. Mm hmm. And for a certain amount of time, they'll go along with you until they finally realize, hey, man, I, he, he's not getting it. So he's I, not I, can't getting it. Wait, I, I can't keep wasting my time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I learned a lot of things from my wife. OK, but there was a lot of things that I learned from my sisters and my, my cousins and things, because most of them are all female. And all you got to do is just sit down and listen to them conversations. And they tell you what they need from you as a man, what they require from you as a man. It's not that hard. You just got really to be able to listen. And a 100%. lot of and, and, and go back to the question you asked when we first started. They said, why are they so angry? Because we are not listening to their needs. We can take care of their wants. If you got a good job, you can take care of all the wants. All day long, but what she needs from her king, mm -hmm. we're not getting that part. And I wanted to ask you this: 
and, and that's deep, man. And, and I'm glad that y'all brought up um, as far as there was, you said when you had a white wife or white girl friend that you just didn't have the connection. And you said the same thing, Rancine, you don't think that you will be speaking the same spiritual language. And that's deep because I never I never thought of that on on that level. But I wanted to ask you this, Elliot. Um, does it even though you had a white white did you have a white wife or girlfriend? Well, you had both. Oh, apparently. yeah, both. So why th- does it bother you now when you see now that you have a different understanding, a different perception a perspective? Does it bother you when you see a black man with a white woman? And if it does. How come? Does it upset it, you? It, 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 well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Everybody can choose who they want to be with. But we got to stop making excuses as black men not to want our queens. Because here's the thing. When you with that white woman and you get out there on the block with the fellas, you see this fine sister you start longing for that. You see what I'm saying? You can't get rid of that because that's a spiritual thing. You get with a white woman, man, then you see these fine sisters walking around here, especially when you run up on one that got a brain and she can have some good conversation. Some clicks in you. Some clicks in you and then you start thinking, damn, man, I'm, I'm missing something. I got this chick over here, you know, and we all right, but on a spiritual level, she don't really understand you. She don't understand your plights, the things that you go mm-hmm. through up here as a black man. She can't. She can't because that's not her experience in life. She can saying. never understand you. She can't understand how to comfort you as a black man. She has no clue. So. That's the reason why you see a lot of the cheating going on, things of that nature. Fellas rather, on, on, on payday, they rather hang out, get drunk, kick it with the fellas before he even go home. Because there's nothing to make you want to go home. And then you get home, and especially with some black women, when you get home after a hard day's work, you come home to a summer gun arguing. Want to fuss about something petty. You see what I'm saying? Wait now, now, did you experience that with your with your with your white uh exes? Did you experience that? And that's part of and that, that fits into the attitude. Never. Thing. Never. That never. see that's never. what I'm saying too. That fits into the never. attitude I, thing. I, 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 yeah, I, I I never experienced that coming home to somebody screaming and you know it was it, it was never none of that. You know Until you, but you you did this just to be clear, and I'm gonna come to you the second red scene just for clarity. Mm-hmm. You never experienced that with the white woman, but you experienced that with the black woman. I'm asking. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you come out of one war zone, you got to come back to your house, and there's another war zone for you to deal with. That begins See, that, to get that, old after a while. That's why we have this conversation because there, there, there is something there, you know. Like why? Now, not, now, not, now. That's not to say that there's no white woman that's contentious, meaning I want to argue all the time. That's not. Oh, what, got some of them too. Saying. But you that's got some of them too. But that's not your experience with the different white women that you've mm-hmm. had. But mm-hmm. was it your experience with all the black women that you had? No. But okay. the ones I was in a serious relationship with, absolutely. Absolutely. Would you like to rebuttal Racine? I mean, I'm just gonna say they can there could be a plethora of reasons why these black women would have an attitude. Not to mention we also are out in the workforce and having going through hardships and hard times. We didn't it ain't like we are exempt from racial profiling and and being discriminated against, we are the most disrespected group of people, black women. So we also have a hard time going out in this world. It ain't just black men that get targeted. I mean, do the look at the past couple of years, like it's black men, women, children, 
we all getting having a hard time out here but in these streets. What, so I'm not making an excuse. I'm just saying it's not just black men that are coming home and needing to lay their lay their burdens down. It's black women too. Also, it's how you gonna act when you come home. That, huh? It's how you gonna act when you come home. Cause every day I ask this one right here. How 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 was your day? Sure, I was going to ask you to say something. <laughs> well, hold on. We can't hear you. Sit we, can't hear you. Right. we can't hear you. Can you hear you, me? Um, A maybe, little bit. Maybe, maybe you, you and him should change spots because I can't. We can't hear you. Maybe you should sit down. Or you sit on his lap. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. that's that's better. Okay, yes. I, I apologize for my appearance. I just got off work. I look horrible. I work from home, but so I, I, just, put a hat on. <laughs> I just want to say, wh why are women coming home with an attitude? There's two sides to a story. Why? I'm saying now, if if a woman is coming home with an attitude, something's wrong. They arguing. Why? Because a woman ain't gonna just come home and argue for no reason. They're not going to do that. Are you there? That's what I was just yes, going yes, with. Yes, I'm like, there's many there, reasons there, 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 why a, woman is, a black woman is angry. Why? There's an issue. There's something wrong. What is the problem? Because a woman ain't going to just come home and argue for no reason. For They're the not going to do that. Okay. They're not going to do that. Right. That's what something I want to know. That, something at home is not sitting right. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. A woman ain't going to just come home and argue for no reason. There's two sides to a story. A man going to tell his side. When can a woman tell hers? Thank so you. That's what I was saying. That's what, that's Black awesome. women also go through their things and they also need a, a safe place and a soft place to express themselves, especially when we are, we always fight for our Black men, period. We always fight for our black men. So if if a black if a black man is coming home to that to a household with his black wife or black woman, whatever significant other, and there is some strife going on in that house, you gotta look at you gotta look at why. Like what's what has happened? What is happening? You're absolutely right. Because I'm not gonna sugarcoat nothing. If mm -mm. if a woman is upset and she's venting, there's a reason. It's a reason. It's a reason. And I've that's said this to you, my kids. I think I said, straight talk makes for straight, straight understanding. That's right? why I said. And black if, women if they, are very, fussing, very good about giving straight talk. If they fussing, then the man, if you're angry, that angry, then your man is probably not listening to what you're putting down. You see what I'm saying? Right. And that breeds anger. That breeds anger. She, if, you're, if you're talking, she, may have, she may have been talking about the same thing five different times and still going through it, going through it. But she's still in the fight, which is why you hear her being angry because she's but talking to me, you about whatever the thing is over and over and over again, and she's getting the same results. Me, Nothing is person, me personally, I'm going to say what's wrong. You either taking a run with it or you do whatever it is you want to do. I'm only going to say it once. If you know we don't handle the okay. situation, at that, if we don't handle the situ situation at, at that time, there's a problem. We, there's an yeah, issue, okay. and I'm going to address it. A hundred. I'm going well, to address 100%. it. hundred percent. I'm not. I, 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 I'm too old to sit here and play games. I'm gonna tell yeah, you what's thank wrong. Thank you. I'm gonna tell you what's wrong. Either you're gonna listen. If you're not, if you choose not to listen, yeah, you can get on down the road, too brother. Terrible time. Deuces, uh -oh. get uh -oh, on down Ellie, the road. That's, that's that girl talk now, Elliot. That that girl talk now. They, they, they go back get on down the road, brother. Because I'm not here just, for it. But this is what I wanted to ask you. Nobody got time to play games. Nobody got time to play games. This is Elliot's <laughs> show. I'm going back in the in the room. <laughs> now I'm glad you put your input. I'm glad you can you can come on any time because that's what it's all about. It's it's all about all of us. And, and y'all been together twenty years. There's two yeah. sides to the story. It's his side, my side, and it's the truth. That's somewhere three. in between. That, ain't no, ain't no in between. Now no, the, the woman, truth. The if truth a woman is upset about, 
if a woman is upset about something, there's a reason. There's a reason. Hundred percent. So Racine, what I wanted to ask you. Yes. Uh, th thank you, thank you, uh, Keisha. I appreciate your your input, and, and and I'm glad you pointed that out because that's only right and it's only fair. Um, so I wanted to know Racine about because we had a discussion also. Well, we had a few discussions, but I wanted to have many discussions. <laughs> right, right. So that's why I, I just skipped that and I just get right to the point. I want to know for you, how is it or is it hard? Because you might be as a woman, you might be approached three or four, five, six times a day. You know, you go out, every man you see, you know, they look all that good gravy and you might be at a club or something and you and you get in 20 offers. Um, you know, what's your name or how you doing? Or can I take you out? So what is the approach that you that you accept? How how will you how do you choose which one that you'll say yes to or you give your number to? Because as a woman, that must be hard. No, it's not. It's not. It's not that it's hard. It can be exhausting. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. So it's it's not that it's hard because that is it. It just it is what it is. If you're out in a club or a bar or whatever, like it's just it is. That's the environment. That's the culture of the environment that that you're in. Um, what's what's gonna get me is respect. It's it's the way that he approaches me. Oh, okay. If you are approaching me with 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 what I feel is any level of disrespect, you're not your approach will be disrespected. <laughs> well, let's go back to this. If you ain't been taught by a, a real man how to approach a good woman, your approach is always going to be wrong because you ain't never been taught the right way. And the only way for a man, a good man, to learn how to approach a good woman is if he asks another good woman. Absolutely. No. That makes sense. The best advice you can get on how to deal with a woman, ask another good woman. Ask, ask another woman. Mm-hmm. That's it. You, you, especially if you have not been taught by a real man and have some time and love from a real man, you're not gonna know. I'm sorry, you're just not gonna know. You know, when you young, you say stupid stuff. When you when you meet a lady in the club, you know what I'm saying. Right. Some of it is pretty provocative. Some mm -hmm. of it is, is is subtle. Man, you have so many. You can go to the club right now. There's a beautiful woman sitting at the bar by herself. She right. wants somebody to come say something to her. But you got to be careful about how you say it and what you say. You see what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. And, 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 and I've told some of my friends who got money and drive nice cars, house, all that. That's the worst thing you can do. Go to a woman talking about what you got. Because... She may already have that stuff too. So she's not impressed. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? She 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 want to talk about something else that's not in what you have. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And, and I'll tell you this. A woman knows she wants to fool with you within the first five or ten minutes of her talking to you. I was gonna say in five minutes. In five you know minutes, man? you she, uh, she men, knows Men will right. talk themselves out of some ass. Uh, what, what said again, Racine? I don't want to curse, but no, men say. will talk talk themselves out of some ass. Oh shoot! So let me ask you this: If I saw yep. you, Racine, if I seen you, if I seen you sitting down in the bar, right, or wherever, mm -hmm. and if I came to you. Because you said the approach is everything. If I came to you like I was in the seventies, I said, "What's happening, Foxy Mama? Would you would, would you give me some play?" Um, <laughs> I probably would laugh. Hey, little Mama, how you doing? <laughs> which 
Which is which is gonna get your foot in the door, right? Because you're making me laugh. Oh, Women, oh. First of all, we first all deal with, 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 with the world, so we no. love to laugh. Hold on, Keisha, we can't hear you. I, I can't hear what you're saying. saying. Yeah, I can't hear what she's saying. Seat. You have to send a seat, Keisha. We can't hear you. We got it. We we want we want you to be heard if you're going to speak. The, 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 the thing is, the thing is, the approach that's what is I said. everything, especially with an intelligent woman. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Man, when I was young and in the Navy, I, I come to a female because, let's face it, in Norfolk, Virginia, you didn't, you didn't have to have no whole lot of finesse about yourself to get somebody and take them home. You know what I'm saying? We, we, mm -hmm. man, me and my friends, we would come up to a female in the club and, and can I smell it? I won't tell it. Oh, shit. oh my goodness. And, and you go home with them. You know, but now that I'm older, I realize, you know what, man, that was very disrespectful. But you have to look at this, too. A lot of women want to be treated like queens. But you ain't royalty. You ain't even close to being royalty Why I treat you like a queen. You know what I'm saying? You, you see you uh -oh. see it all the time. Uh -oh. You know what I'm saying? You you on social media shaking your ass on social media for likes and comments. That is a you know whole what I'm saying? Come on, man. You know, it it just there's a flavor that a woman have to uphold too if she want to get a good man. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no woman that's presenting herself out here. For every man to see. Because, see, I want that surprise to be nice for me. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, if you got a beautiful woman, you got a beautiful woman, dude's going to look at it. Okay? Make it but nice. if your woman is your woman, that's what that is. But I'll tell you this. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in your house as the man of your house, what another cat say today don't mean spit. But if you ain't handling your business, that same dude could come along eight months later, say the same thing, gonna sound a little bit better to him. Now we're gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm, I'm gonna um I want you both to have closing arguments, uh and you two Racine, but I would like to say um that I spoke to you, Rancine. I spoke to Shanique Burrow, who I call S. Brilliant, and I spoke to an, another friend of mine who I call the Break of Dawn. And you guys opened my eyes, and the common denominator to what all three of you ladies said was that many times Black women have an attitude because of what they're going through and how they've been treated by other men. And it's like, and at times it could be kind of a defense, you know, don't take it personal. You know, I, I was speaking to somebody earlier and I, and I was saying, well, I, why does sometimes women don't speak? What's the attitude? I'm just being polite. And she pointed out, well, maybe she had a long day and you're the 35th person that's wanted to say hi. And I don't feel like saying hi now, but I don't know that. It just looks like you have an attitude to me. So I want to thank y'all for enlightening, enlightening me because all three of y'all said something like that that just gave me a whole different perception. And that Watch was the denominator. Watch this here, brother-in-law. Yes. For a broken heart, we're talking about women who've been through a lot and they just keep getting with these trash dudes, okay? There's two components in there, okay? If you encounter a woman with a broken heart, a good black man has to be able to present himself as an antidote to a broken heart. And that's not something that's done overnight. You have to learn to be penicillin. You see what I'm saying? To fix that sickness. See what I'm saying? Yes. But 
at the same time, the woman have to be open to that. And a lot of time they so upset and bitter, it it takes some time. You got to keep working at it, keep working at it, keep working at it. Just like with your sister, my man. We dealt with each other, man, for like a month. And she was like, man, I'm not trying to be bothered. And I actually begged her. She's standing right here. I Please, just give me a chance. Just give me a chance. Whatever you've been going through, whatever, let me let me let me try to be that antidote. Let me just give me a chance. You give me a chance, it don't work out. You ain't lost nothing but a little bit of time. And Racine, and, and that's relevant to what we spoke about because you said your ex was just he just wouldn't give up. He just wouldn't give up, and he finally got you. So that's relevant. Your story. Your experience is relevant to what he said. So that's the truth, correct? Yes. That what he said, it, it, it helps if you just never give up, huh? I, it, well, it wasn't that I, I wasn't uh, angry or bitter. He was just a younger guy. So I was, and I was not interested in dating anyone younger than myself. But he was very adamant about being with me. So he, what? adamantly pursued me in such a way and with the utmost respect that I just couldn't deny him. And that's what you're saying, Elliot, basically, correct? I ain't too proud to beg, brother. Oh, I heard that. I ain't too so, proud to beg because so I wanted him. And I, I'm going I'm to do exactly. what, hey, that was the energy. Say what I need to say and I'm willing to do whatever I need to do because I want you in my life and I want you in my life forever. She was with and me. That what, was the energy month, of my she ex. She was with me a month and a half energy. and bought our ring, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew that was the one for me. That was the one for me, hands down. I, I ain't looking for nothing else. I don't want nothing else. This is who I want. And I'm going to do what it takes. Man, I had that little, I had a car, bro. And, 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 and Keisha will tell you, it didn't even have no reverse gear. I was when I first met Keisha, I was gonna drive to New York, bro, for Thanksgiving. <laughs> with a car with no reverse gear, I had to stick my foot out the door and push my car, bro, for it to go backwards. That's how oh, bad man. I wanted to be with her. You see what I'm saying? So if a real man want you, he gonna do whatever it takes. He gonna run through hell and high water. To be with you. I yes. love that. Yes. That, so that, listen, that, that's fact. This is um so we, we're going to end this now. Now, is there anything anything that anyone would like to say before we end it? Let me say this first. I want to thank you all for taking your time out to spending time on, on, on the platform. I want to thank Shanique Berg from Toxic Magazine for allowing us and me to do this again. That's S. Brilliant. Shout out to S. Brilliant. Um, is there anything else that anyone would like to add? Because you guys, you really hit the point. And again, I really want to thank you both for taking your time out. So you in Texas, you're in Connecticut. So this is, this is universal right now. Would you like to say anything, Rancine, before we leave? <laughs> Listen, I love black love. I just, okay. black love wins every time, hands down, period. I respect that. What about you, Elliot? Say, man, as, as a black man, talking to some kings and queens on this podcast, hey, man, we can't give up on each other. We cannot give up on each other because we have a spiritual connection that no other race can understand. And we need to keep pushing that. Uh, understand and be the world of BS. All we have to do is talk. And talk without offending and listen without defending. And I yeah, think we'll be true. better off with that. All right. Okay, so so we go, we're going to knowledge. We're going to end it. I'm going to call that knowledge from E. We're going to end that with that. So once again, and that was well said, sir. That was well said. Definitely well said. So again, I want to thank you for being a part of Toxic Magazine, Everything Old School Podcast. Thank you so much. And um, 
we'll do this again sooner or later. We'll, we'll be back, again. God willing. And I got three, I got three words for you, Racine. You already know what it is. <laughs> you know so what it is, know? right? I, I want to say? You to say I want you to say it. Bacon and eggs. What's the three words? Uh, that's Bacon and eggs. And you. you know what that is. <laughs> Okay. I love you, brother. Peace, Long, man. We're gonna get together. Yes, sir. Uh, real soon, man. For sure. All right. Peace. Thank y'all.